Revelation 9-4 And it was commanded them, that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. This passage describes a directive given to a group of entities, instructing them not to harm the vegetation on earth, including grass, greenery, and trees. Instead, their focus is to be solely on targeting individuals who lack the seal of God on their foreheads. This imagery, found in Revelation 9-4, signifies a symbolic protection granted to those who are spiritually marked or chosen by God, contrasting with the impending judgment or punishment reserved for those who do not bear this seal, the references to the seal of God, indicating the authority or protection granted by the Christian deity often referred to as God, or the God of the Bible. This imagery is found in the book of Revelation, which is part of the New Testament of the Christian Bible. In the context of Revelation, the seal of God symbolizes divine protection and belonging to God's chosen people amidst apocalyptic events and spiritual warfare. In the Christian tradition, the name used to refer to the deity is simply God. This is the one God of monotheistic belief, who is seen as the creator and ruler of the universe. In the passage from Revelation 9-4, to the seal of God refers to the authority protection granted by this deity. In the ancient Near Eastern religious context, El was a common term to refer to a supreme deity, and it has been suggested by scholars that the early Israelites may have originally worshipped El, their primary deity, before adopting the name Yahweh. However, within the Hebrew Bible itself, the deity is predominantly referred to as Yahweh or the Lord, especially in later texts. El is the father of Bol, and Anot, siblings and consorts. Bol had it, a sun god, associated with fire and the color red, masculine energy, the male phallic and fertility was the storm and rain god in the Canaanite and ancient Mesopotamian religions. Hadid was equated with the Babylonian god Baal, the Greek god Zeus, the Roman god Jupiter, and Set or Seth, sometimes Horus, in ancient Egyptian religion. During the Hellenistic Age, the goddesses Anith and Astarte were blended into one deity, called Atargatis. Astarte, a moon goddess, associated with water, and the color blue, feminine energy, the female womb and fertility, was Ishtar in ancient Mesopotamian religion, the Sumerian goddess Inanna, and Isis in the ancient Egyptian religion, to the Romans the goddess Venus, and to the Greeks Aphrodite. Revelation 13 1-18 And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast and they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds, and tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. And causeth the earth, 
and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, and did live, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. The mark of the beast is a concept described in the book of Revelation in the New Testament of the Bible. It is mentioned in several passages, including Revelation 13 16 18, where it is described as a mark or seal that is required for people to buy or sell goods and services during a future period of time. According to the biblical account, the mark of the beast is imposed by a powerful, and malevolent entity referred to as the beast or the antichrist. The mark is said to be a symbol of allegiance to this entity, and is required for people to participate in economic transactions. Those who do not receive the mark are said to face severe consequences, including being unable to buy or sell anything. The mark of the beast is often interpreted as a symbol of spiritual allegiance to the antichrist, rather than a literal mark or tattoo. Some Christian denominations believe that the mark will be a physical mark, such as a tattoo or a microchip implant, while others believe it will be a spiritual mark that is invisible to the human eye. In the book of Revelation, the marks mentioned in Revelation 9 and Revelation 13 serve different purposes and have different implications. Revelation 9-4 to In this passage, the mark mentioned is the seal of God placed on the foreheads of certain individuals to protect them from harm during apocalyptic events. It symbolizes divine protection and belonging to God's chosen people. Revelation 13 16, 17 Here, the mark is associated with the beast or the Antichrist figure described in Revelation. It is imposed on people as a sign of allegiance to the beast's authority and is required for participation in economic activities. Those who refuse to receive the mark face persecution and exclusion from society. While both marks are symbolic and of spiritual significance, they represent contrasting allegiances, one to God and one to worldly powers opposed to God. The mark in Revelation 9 signifies divine protection and belonging, while the mark in Revelation 13 represents allegiance to an oppressive and antithetical force.